but pretty much. So it's nothing new. It's not going to be anything completely new to you at all, but it's it's simple yet profound. Amen. If you apply it, if you can apply it to your life, because that's what happened to my life a while ago, and that's what's going to happen again. Um, so we're not talking about salvation. Salvation comes by faith in Christ, but then you're born again and a journey starts and you are being consistently transformed into the image of Christ until he takes us to him. But sometimes I think that's why we're here in church. We want to be transformed and it, he does the work and he says the work that he started, he will finish. Yeah. But what's our role in this? What's our role in the work? And so I want to go through a couple of things. Maybe I have to come back real quick and, and get the slides going. Is it? Yeah, you're ready. Okay. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> Good deal. <laughs> We're talking about a new life. Yeah. And actually the title is Hope for a New Transformed Life. I'm going to preach in English, so don't <laughs> worry about it. But <laughs> I put the scripture and everything in German, so yeah. my, my parents maybe can get something out of it too. <laughs> I have a lot of scripture in here, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna mainly let the scripture speak today. So again, that's a hope for a new transformed life. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I wanna give you today. Yeah. I think that's what the Lord wants for you today. So, and that's the order of transformation. We know we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. And, the order goes from the spirit to the body. That's how we are transformed. And, and Jesus said it multiple times, many times in the scriptures, it's like that. And obviously these three are connected. So the spirit is our spirit, our subconscious. That's what we don't really have control over. That's, but that's who we really are. The soul are our thoughts, our emotions, our will. And the body is everything physical. See, hear, taste, tell, um, taste, touch and all these things and the physical doing and so the, the transformation comes from the spirit to the body sometimes we go backwards and we have trouble so let me go further for the first uh, scripture it says blind Pharisee first cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish so that the outside of them may be clean also everybody's trying to read the German aren't you <laughs> <laughs> Right? There's that was my yeah, that was my worry. Do not be paying any attention uh, anymore. Yeah, trying yeah. to encrypt everything yeah. that the meaning is done there. <clears throat> so that's what he was saying. He was saying that the Pharisees were hypocrites because they were looking so good on the outside, trying to look so good on the outside, and actually filthy on the inside. They had the order all wrong, and it doesn't work like that. That's what, what Jesus wanted to break. Okay, so let's go to the next one here. Ephesians, it's the New Living Translation, it says, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. So there's the order again. It goes from the Spirit to the soul, thoughts and attitudes, emotions, and then to the physical. That's the order. Yep. Everyone heard that before? Mm -hmm. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. That's how we are transformed. Be transformed and Amplified Bible and progressively changed by the renewing of your mind So he said if you want to be actually changed and transformed you have to go one step back to the soul and be constantly changed in your mind and In your emotions in your attitude so you can be physically changed. Okay mm -hmm. Now again these three things are connected These three things are connected the spirit the soul and the body and we do have responsibility for all three. Yeah. He says, don't you know that your body is the, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. So if you completely neglect your body, I'm not sure how healthy your spirit is. <laughs> because you should notice that. You know, it's still irresponsible. Everything comes from the spirit and goes this direction. But if you notice something in your body, that is not right and you're dealing like Roger was saying with with an illness or something that's the enemy trying to come in and affect right. the other things sure it's affecting your mind at first it's your emotion you're getting frustrated and then 
it goes on and on and on. If it's for a long time, your spirit is gonna get beaten down. And that's when it gets really hard, when your spirit is broken. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because if you're full in the spirit, you can endure these things. Yeah, yeah. If your spirit is broken and your body is good, it's not a good life. Mm. It's hard. Yeah. But I'm talking about one thing right now. Can you skip the soul? What if you, you skip the, the order of how you're being transformed? And a lot of times I've seen when we do things out of obligation, you know, when we do things out of, you don't feel like it, you don't think like it, you're worn down and you just do it, you know, because that's, well, that's the role you have as a father, as a husband, as a mother, as a, uh, whatever your job is, and it wears on you. I'm not talking about obedience. Usually obedience, when the Lord says, do something, you do it, even if you don't feel like it. Yeah. That's a different story. But I'm talking about being constantly in the state of mind, and I'm very guilty of this. If you don't have enough time with the Lord, if you were just busy all the time, distracted, but you're a Christian, you're born again, it's going to wear you out because you're skipping the soul. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing the right things, but you're getting more tired, you're going to get worn down, and you get burned out. Mm -hmm. That's how it feels. That's probably a, a big problem, mm -hmm. especially for me. I battle that a lot. And I know this is the order. Yeah. And when you're full and you're read up and, and prayed up, then you do things because out of the overflow of your heart. Yeah. And then it just flows naturally. Yeah. And this is the life, this is the constant state God wants us in. Not that you're forfeiting your salvation, but you're not living to your full potential of what God wants right. to do with you in your life either. Yeah. So skipping that part is not healthy in the long run. No. <clears throat> So, he said, no good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And he was saying the, the context of the scripture is Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees again and saying, Pharisees, hypocrites, you know, why are you doing that? And that's what he's saying. You can, you can only fake it so long until you are kind of just tired and yeah. worn out. Yeah. That's not how he wants us to live. So again, the order would be, we're born again. That starts the journey. And then we constantly make a decision to feed our spirit and work we work on our body, we work on our thoughts, but the main focus should be on the spirit and our, that, that's a progression. Then work on our, on our thoughts and our emotions, take authority over that. And then it takes over in our mouth, like James says, the mouth is, the, the tongue is like this rudder, this little tiny rudder on a big ship. It steers it and it actually guides it and it guides your life. And then what you think, feel, speak, that's how in the direction um, your life will be going to. Yeah. Now, have you thought this before? I've tried so many times. I've, I've prayed so much and I've read so much and I've done all these things. And I, I've, you know, we get discouraged sometimes and we think, how are we going to make it? I mean, I'm battling with this or that. And there's something in my life that I've been dealing with for five years already and 10 years and it doesn't break off. And I've been born again. Things in my life, when I got born again, things just fell away. There were a bunch of sins and baggage and strongholds that just dropped like this. And then there are other things that just always creep back in and trying to come in and trying to take over my mind and my emotions and my attitudes and all these things. If you want to know more, ask Jen. <laughs> <laughs> she can tell you in detail all these things. <laughs> but the truth is, it says, let God be true and every man a liar. If God says, this is how you be, are transformed, this is how you are transformed. That's right. That's right. Period. <laughs> it's a lie that we have in our minds. If we say, oh, it hasn't worked, well, then you haven't done it right or something. <laughs> hasn't, maybe you haven't really done it. Have you really prayed consistently about one subject? Lord, take this from me every single day, every single moment, and just do it. Just keep going. Turn to the Lord, and He will transform. 
That's what he does. Period. You know, I'm always thinking that God be true, but every man a liar. Whenever a thought comes in our mind like that, I've tried so many times, I'm discouraged, I'm worn down, we'll turn to Jesus. Exactly. So again, I have a couple of examples. This is the truth, and this is what we focus on. Yeah. And I have a couple of examples right now about the mind. How? So we are in control of our mind and our emotions. This is our conscience. This is what we mainly talk about. The spirit is renewing us, but we're talking in the sermon about what can we, what is our role in this? Yeah. At the end of the day, God is the one that transforms. The Holy Spirit is the one that transforms. But what is our role? What is our thing? We're not saved by works, but I think we, have a big, we play a big role in decision-making, in saying yes to God on a daily basis, on how much we'll be transformed. So the first one is King David. And he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. So he, he's, he tells his soul what to do. He tells his soul what to think. He tells his soul what to feel. That's what he does. And you might have heard, I'm, I'm talking a little bit more, more like that, about that later. But you've heard these things from the world said, fake it till you make it. Yeah. Well, that's a half truth. Because that's planning in your mind, whatever you want to achieve, fake it till you make it. And it feels similar than this, but it's basically you're fooling yourself. If you fake it till you make it, you're fooling yourself. If you say to your soul, I don't feel like it right now, but I'm going to be happy anyway, I'm going to worship Him anyway, you are putting truth in your mind. Yeah. You are actually overriding the lies that you have in your mind and your emotions and your feelings and telling your body, this is how you should feel because that is actually true. Amen. So you're, that's the opposite. You're not fooling yourself, you're pouring truth into yourself and getting the fool out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's the opposite. Yeah. So that's what we do when we when we renew our minds and when we tell our soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Right now, I don't feel like it. Um, Danielle talks a lot about that too. You don't feel like it, but you just praise the Lord and He turns things around. Yeah. And the second example, she doesn't know I put her there. It's gonna be changed. <laughs> no, not because she knows, but there's a reason why so many people around the world invite her to speak, to speak to their companies, to speak to their things. I'm not saying that as a husband. I'm saying this is just a preacher right now. But there is this strong will in her soul yeah. that she can just tell herself, "Do this, think this." Feel like this. I don't know where it comes from, but I've been confronted with that a lot of times, <laughs> and it's a good thing. And there are things like, I don't know if I put something there or not. No. Okay. So there are things like, I had a hard time uh, in the beginning when I was when I was saved. You know, the old was still creeping in, the old behaviors, the old way of thinking kept creeping in. And Jane is like, why are you not excited about this? Where well, I said, well, I just don't feel like it. I don't know. I just don't feel like it. Which is not the right thing to do. Even if you don't feel like it, if you don't rejoice for the truth, then some, you need to change something in your thinking or your feeling. And that was right. So, or something like, in the beginning, I would be like, oh, I'm so tired right now. And she would say, well, don't be tired. <laughs> You know, there's some, <laughs> she's smiling, but that's true. There's, there's this part that I think that's a main, that's one of the main reasons why people are so amazed by what she's doing and so, but because of that will, to tell her soul, her spirit, or her, her thoughts and her emotions, what to think and what to feel. She gets torn down a lot of times, but then she tells herself, she doesn't ever linger in that. She's never long in this phase because that ability, that muscle, and I think it's a muscle that you work. I truly think that you can train that yes. to, you think, you know, you, how Pastor Rick would always say, stinking thinking. Uh -huh. If that's thinking thinking, you have to go back in the Word, get back into listening to something godly, renew your mind daily, like Ephesians says or Romans 12 too. 
And you have authority over that, but also about your feelings. Even if your flesh tells you something and you're tired, you can tell us, I'm not going to be tired right now. I'm going to push through. And if you go back in history and you think about all the, the people that, you know, the United States are proud of or the thing, the people that are big leaders, they have that ability. Every single one of them. When a hundred and a thousand people are getting discouraged, it's usually the leaders that stand up and say, we're not going to be discouraged. We're looking forward. They're reminded of the truth. They have the ability, the strong ability to change their minds and change their feelings for the truth, for the better, to change history. Yeah. You know, George Washington, study his life, we just watched a movie about it. Uh, what was it called, the armor? Washington's armor. We actually were on set, Capernaum Studios was filming there in Texas. They're the same ones that filmed The Chosen, the same studio that made The Chosen. They filmed Washington's armor. So it's a Christian production company. You should, you should watch it, it's great. And you see these things, he had that ability. So, let's break it down. We are com actually not, do we only have the ability to change our thoughts and emotions, we're also commanded to, to do so. So the first scripture is, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is the first words that came out of John the Baptist's mouth. When Jesus first started preaching, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then right after Pentecost, when Paul or Peter was telling the people, the spirit fell, he explained to them, to the Jews, um, what they did to the Messiah, who he was, they crucified him, he was the son of God, and he gives this first sermon in Acts 2 or 3. Two, three yeah. And they said, well, what should we do? They were cut to heart. What should we do? And the first word he said, repent. Now, Pastor Richard knows that. <laughs> Ray probably too. In the Greek it says, the word repent means matanoeo, which means to change your mind. Yeah. To think differently, to reconsider in a way of to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins. To be in a way convicted, but then you say, I'm going to change this. I realize this is wrong. This needs to change. I'm making a change. I changed the way I think about things that I did before that I thought, whatever. I now realize this is not whatever. This needs to change, and I'm going to change that. So he's speaking. Jesus didn't start his ministry and just said, you know, the Spirit is going to do the work in you. You just lean back and relax the whole rest of your life. He said, repent. I know people weren't saved yet, but still, this, this is a decision we make. And it also says in the scriptures that we should hold on to our salvation. And I think that's a, in a term of work out your salvation. It's in that way. It's a spiritual work. We say yes. That's not a lot of work to open your Bibles, you know. Or uh, it was such a hard work to be transformed. You know, it's work-based. No, it's not. We just open it up. Or you make a decision to read the Bible instead of watching TV. Or you say, for me... When I'm tired, when I'm exhausted, usually my downfall is I look at the phone and I watch some videos to relax. If I put the phone down and I eat something, I take a power nap of 10, 15 minutes, and then I pray, I feel much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise it's it. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it. yeah, it's true. And so, so much for that. He says, everybody knows the scripture, one of me probably, part of the believers. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, worthy of respect, right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, admirable, of good repute, if there's any excellence, anything worthy of praise, think continually. And I brought this out of the Amplified too. Think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Yeah. That's, the, that's the work. That's what transforms. That's the Romans 12 too, transform, knowing actually for yourself what God's will is for your life. And this is the breaking the strongholds, getting out of this, you know, thing that has bothered you for years and years and years. You just put that spiritual work to it, that spiritual muscle to it, and it's going to change. Now what about our emotions? What does the Bible tell us about that? Paul says... Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. He commands us. Rejoice. 
He said, what's wrong with you? You're saved. Rejoice. And, right. I, and then later says, I'm not getting tired of this. I'm going to tell you again, rejoice. <laughs> you can rejoice in the Lord and command your body what to say. Even if you don't feel like it, try it. If you get up in the morning and you're just super tired, go in a room. I like to go outside sometimes where nobody can hear me in the shed. I close the door <laughs> and I'm getting loud. I'm getting, putting my, I'm getting myself excited for the things of the Lord because that's what it what is commanded? He says, rejoice. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's what he's saying. He's talking about the soul part. He's talking about the mind, about the emotions, about the willpower, the strength. Put it to it. Love the Lord your God. Pour yourself out and embrace Him. Love Him and yeah. love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the transformation power. Jesus said, do not worry about your life. The worrying that's in the mind, that's in the heart, he says, don't do it. So if he's commands, don't do it, we are able to not do it. Because that's sometimes the enemy comes in, at least in my mind, and says, I just don't know. I don't know if I can break this off right now. I don't know if I have the strength to do it. If he commands it, we have the strength to do it. Yeah. Like yeah. God be true in every man a liar. No yeah. matter what is in your mind, you say, I just don't feel like it. You know? I just can't help myself. I'm just I'm just getting, I'm so, so angry right now. That's, that's not true. And even if it feels real, it, it seems so real, it seems almost tangible, like God be true in every man alive. Amen. It says in Joshua, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, and do not be discouraged. It's a commandment. Yeah. If he commands it, we're able to do it. I want to give you hope. The Spirit gives you hope today for transformation. Yeah. Maybe not transformation yet in today, but hope for transformation. That opens, that breaks the strongholds off, that breaks the, the ways of thinking off. It's going to be different. Yeah. It's not going to be as it is right now, whatever you're going through in this, in this time. This is going to change. Amen. Whatever you're battling with in your spirit, in your thoughts, in your emotions, in your life, in your body, in your finances, in your relationships, it's just not going to stay like this. It's going to change. And it's going to change a lot. He says, more than we can imagine. He will, he will pour over us and, and bless us more than we could ever actually envision. And that's what He does if you just turn to Him. So, I want to touch on a subject. I want to step aside real quick from this line of thought in my sermon. And I want to talk about something. Do not be deceived. The devil knows the principles of God. All these principles that I have just explained, the way you, you think, your emotions, they're going to determine where your life is going, what direction your life is going. And the devil took these things, took them aside, or everything, when the Lord says, everything you ask in prayer, believing, he will do. That's also a principle of God. And there was a thought movement, I mean, as long as you can think back. But especially in the last... 50, 60, 70 years that is called in that term of personal development. Any, any book you read, anything you, you touch on, you might have heard from of that book, Think and Grow Rich. Who has heard that, of that title before? Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. He was, if you look at his life, I could, I, I 100 million copies, 80 to 100 million copies. It's the number one most sold self-help book, personal development book in the world. And if you look at his life and study, he was a con artist. He was a, I mean, just go to Wikipedia and read, his, read about his life. It is, he talked to spirits, he talked to demons, he had this all fantasy world made up, was divorced, I don't know how many times, tried to betray people, screw, I mean, it's crazy. But the principle that made him rich is true in his book. It's a half truth. It's you think about something that determines your life. If you think about anything, basically, that principle works. So if Elon Musk says, you know, I'm going to build this and that, he has that ability of to think on something and just focus on it so much, it's going to happen at some point. May or may not. If it's based on, a tr on the word of God or not. But you know what I'm saying, if, I don't know if you can follow me right now, 
But if that, if you take that principle out of the Word of God and apply it, they sell it. It sells very good. And every every personal development, mental health, whatever seminar, it's all based on that. It's all based on the Bible and taking morality out of it. Mm. Just you know, sifting yeah. it yeah. out yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and taking only the principles of God that are self-serving. God so, loves success. God loves us, to, loves for us to be successful. Yeah. That's why He again wrote the whole law. He gave the law to Moses that is so that you will be prosperous and successful in the land that He has given us to the Jews. That's why Jews are in general very successful people because they have everything based on the Word of God and they are successful. That's how God invented. He loves success, but He also loves morality. He is truth. He is love. And you can't just take all that out. And that sells. And it, it goes to that point where it's almost new agey to that point where people practice. Yeah. Or at the end of the day, it's witchcraft. Right. If you... That's what I was doing before I became a Christian. I read all these success books and I said, um, I would push myself emotionally and, and mentally to my goals for singing, for opera singing, all these things, and it works. I mean, for hours every day, I would just rewire my mind and just think on that. You know, how are you, how are you successful in life? If somebody says, a little boy says, I want to become an astronaut. What are the chances of a little boy becoming an astronaut? You know, most people want to become an NFL player and it's like 0.0, .0 I know, 2% <laughs> or something, you know? And you've heard the saying, take your kids to church rather than to the game because there's a 0.02% <laughs> chance, you know, you will become an NFL player, but there's a 100% chance that you're going to stand before God someday. Yeah. So, if you want to become an astronaut as a little boy, you don't want to discourage them. Say, okay, go ahead, do it, you know. But at some point, they're going to get distracted. If the boy doesn't get distracted and he thinks just about that a thousand times a day, 10,000 times a day, that's all he's consumed by. He most likely will go to the military. He most likely will go in that direction. If there's nothing else in his life, any obstacles comes in the way, he's saying, it doesn't matter. I'm going to stick to this. All your thought and all your emotions, if they're consumed by one thing, your life is going to go in that direction. If you want to become a professional in any field, that's how it is. And... So in the beginning, when I got saved, after I got saved, I literally threw out the baby with the bathwater about this very subject. I said, all the, thing, all the books that I had, I threw everything away. All of them. I dumped them all in the trash can and I got the Bible and that was it. And all I could do is just read and read and read because I didn't even know what salvation was about and the gospel was about. So hours, every single day, I would read and read and read and I was just so fascinated. That's all I could think about. That's literally all I could think about all day. Not because I tried, but this was all in my mind. I didn't know what it means to be saved by faith. I'm like, how does that work? How is somebody just justified by faith alone? How, how does that play out? And all I could possibly think about for at least half a year, three quarters of a year, I was consumed. And then Jen was asking me, what do you think you're called to do? I'm like, but what do you think? Well, I know what God wants me to do. He wants me to be a pastor. But I don't even know what that means. But I knew that's all I can think of. That's all I can think about. I'm consumed by this, you know. And Jen was fascinated. She said, how, how does he have all this understanding of the word? She's been a Christian for almost 20 years or 15, 20 years at that point. And I... I was growing so fast, but I thought, well, how couldn't I? I was just consumed by it. I was obsessed with it. I was obsessed with reading the Bible and studying, and, and I was not looking at the time. I wasn't like, okay, for the next 15 minutes, I'm going to have my prayer time. I just opened the Word, and I kept going. And I didn't look at the clock. I didn't, I didn't care about anything else. I just kept reading. And going back and forth, I wasn't like, okay, today I'm going to read three chapters, and tomorrow I'm going to read three chapters. I was going to Romans, and then, oh, that's in James 2. And I was doing cross-references, and I got back and forth, and I was just consumed by it. And that was the product. Just naturally, that's what turns out. That's what happens. And so, if you turn to these things, like witchcraft, it... it 
works to some degree. It doesn't work on the believer that is projected by the blood of Jesus, but it works in other people's lives to some degree. The law of attraction. Have you heard of that law of attraction? That's that's the good looking apple here. <laughs> If it's not based on the Word of God, it's going to eat you up. Because you're going that, like, something bad is happening in my life, it must have been my fault because I had a bad thought. And you go down in self-condemnation and you're going to end up... Any testimony, we've heard, Jen has heard hundreds of testimonies of people that came out of the New Age, they go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and more knowledge and all that, until they are completely exhausted and completely torn apart and end up giving life to Christ. Positive affirmation. Same thing. If it's based on the Word of God, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing and it will transform your life. If it's like you step, you don't know the Word of God and you say, I am a successful man. Based on what? You know, you're, you know you're fooling yourself. You can't just make up something and just think it. And a lot of people that are not Christian are doing that. They take these Christian principles and think, well, they are Christians because because they believe it, so it works, right? No, because Jesus actually lived and actually was the Son of God. He died and resurrected. That's why it works. <laughs> Not because somebody just, oh, I, I believe you because that's how it works. No, it is based on absolute truth, and I believe it. That's why it works. But at the end of the day, he says, What does shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That's what all of this is. If you look at all the successful people in Hollywood, all the successful singers, they're all somehow involved in witchcraft, Satanism, all that stuff. And that's based on all these things yep. to the core. Mm -hmm. And then going even into the spirit. It's success on the outside, and you're going to lose your own soul. You give it all up. You, you have to basically give your soul to the devil. And that's not what God wants us to do. So we need to be careful. Prayer transforms us every time we pray we're transformed but if the prayer is not based on the word of god we need to be in the word too we have to know the word we have to know what god says and based on that we pray <laughs> i'll give him a little time to read it in german <laughs> <laughs> you want to know how it sounds <laughs> Was nützt es einem Menschen, wenn er die ganze Welt gewinnt und seine eigene Seele verliert? There it is. That's fine. <laughs> but how are we going to do that? Focus on Jesus and the Word. That's it. He is the one that transforms. But we are the ones that say yes. Yeah, We're the ones that open the Bible. Yes. It's not Him. We're the ones that say, I'm going to pray now. That's all. That's the part, that's our role in transformation. Yeah. He does the transforming, we say yes, that's all. That's that spiritual work that I was talking about. It's not a works, it's not physical work based, but it's a yes. And it says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. It's him, eventually, that works in you, but we say yes. <laughs> and he causes us to get excited about things, to get excited about give. Whatever he puts in our heart, we give. We cheerfully give to the church, to other people, to the people around us. Yeah. But out of the overflow of our heart, not because of obligation, not because we have to, not because we are think we are a Christian. At the end of the day, if we don't have that connection to God, if you don't say yes to God, we're just, it's, it turns into frustrating, hypocritical behavior or arrogance. Either one. It's either you're getting really frustrated with other people and yourself, or in that puffed up, you know, religious, arrogant behavior where you think, I did all of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made the transformation because I studied the Bible so long, because I prayed so much, because I have three doctor and PhDs in theology. That's why I am more knowledgeable than you are and holier than you are. That's the religious spirit in that. And that doesn't transform, it's the yes every day. 
every second of the day. Amen. That giving yourself up, you yielding to the Holy Spirit every day, in every moment, saying yes to God. That's that's all we need to do. So, at the end of the day, it says about all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. That's the NIV version. Protect your heart. Because everything you do is determined by it. Everything you do. And that's it. Like I said earlier, but the biggest transformation that I went through is when I was completely consumed with the Word of God. Just because, because of Him, He transformed. I didn't do anything. I was just excited, you yeah. know. But He says, "Go back to your first love in Revelations to that church, the yeah. second church." He talks yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says that fire that you started. Don't be yeah. lukewarm. Don't be, uh, you know, in this in between place. He wants us to be on fire. And the fact that he says don't be lukewarm, that means that we have, we're not victims to our, well, I just don't feel like it, I just don't. That's our responsibility and we have the power, we have the strength. He gave us a will, he gave us that don't be discouraged, be strong and courageous to say yes to God. Yeah. Open your mouth, be sober-minded and focused and vigilant in prayer and you pray and you, you, you're going to be transformed, whatever you, you're in right now. He's going to do the work, but you're going to say yes. Amen. Amen. You know, I tell Janie that Janie is either really...